name is a sci-fi horror show. My name is Andy, and this is my little 10-minute window to the rest of the world. Today is a very special episode. This is a breakdown of Night of the Living Dead. They're coming to get you, Barbara. There's often a lot of confusion when you try to sort these uh, Living Dead and Night of the Living Dead, George Romero, John Russo films out. This is a quick breakdown in, in history of how those films would come to be and how to sort them out. It all began with two filmmakers, John Russo and George A. Romero, and casting crew and called themselves Image 10. 10. The Night of the Living Dead, the classic, started off as a script. Two actual scripts, from um, half from George Romero, half from John Russo. The George Romero half was the script called Anibis he was working on. It was the beginning half of a ghouls attacking the human, human race uh, kind of film based upon the work I Am Legend, a uh, book by Richard Masterson which would later become inspired from The Last Man on Earth starring Vincent Price, The Mega Man starring Charlton Heston, and in later years Will Smith in I Am Legend. He's the last of mankind and he's hunting these creatures and so from the perspective of the readers and the ghouls Humans become the bad guys. It's, it's interesting. I re highly recommend reading it. Now, the second half of the script was based on the workings of John Russo. He was working on a script about aliens who come down and eat humans. It became the ending of The Night of the Living Dead, where you realize the hunt humans start to fight back, and in fighting back, we start to become the animal. Again, a little hint, hint of uh, I Am Legend in there. So the two scripts melded together perfect and created a script for what will future be known as Night of the Living Dead in production known as Night of the Flesh Eaters. During pre-production of Night of the Flesh Eaters, the production was also known as Monster Flick, but that's just a terrible working title. Well, in 1968, the two filmmakers finally created their masterpiece, Night of the Flesh Eaters, directed by George A. Romero and produced and co-written by John Russo. This is just the beginning, folks. When Night of the Living Dead first came out, you have to put yourself in a certain mindset. Up until this time, Zombie movies were an entirely different thing. Movies like Revolt of the Zombie were popular, but the most popular movie at the time would be White Zombie. And the concept of a zombie was usually mindless hordes controlled by one evil master for a certain deed. And if you got on the bad side of this person who had to control these massive hordes of zombies, you then became the subject matter of a zombie movie in the past. It was very voodoo related, very black magic dark related stuff. But it wasn't until Night of the Living Dead, 1968, that Romero and Russo introduced the fact of the mindless, flesh-eating zombie, which was more animalistic. There was no right, no wrong, no reasoning, no controlling, just blood, guts, brain-eating zombies. And these two filmmakers at the time had no idea what was ahead of them. They created the zombie genre that we know and love today. That's why George Romero was known as the godfather of all zombie movies. When the film first came out, nobody would touch it. It played locally in Pennsylvania and where they were, and it was a huge phenomenon. People were coming out in drones to see this film. It was a huge, huge local success. But outside of a few art house theaters, no one was playing Night of the Flesh Eaters. So they needed to get promotion. This is where things start to get interesting. A man named Walter Reed decided to take on promoting Night of the Flesh Eaters. But... Walter Reed had already been promoting a film called Flesh Eaters, and fearing that the two would get confused, he decided a name change was in order, and he came up with the title Night of the Living Dead. Now, this instantly clicked with both John Russo and George Romero, and the film became Night of the Living Dead. Now, when Walter Reed took over promotions, very few copies of this movie were made. None of these major film companies would take it. Now, armed with a new name, Night of the Living Dead, they were on their way. But... The drama starts here. The key to making a movie is you have copyright at the beginning and the end. This notice makes your film legally yours. You register it, Night of the Flesh Eaters, for example. Well, they didn't put a copyright on the end of the film because back in those days, films ended with the end. All the credits were in the beginning. When the print was made for Night of the Living Dead, the copyright symbol was not put on the main title and was not at the end. So, legally, the film became instant public property to everyone in the planet. This became a huge problem for these independent filmmakers because they had no legal recourse of people making prints of their own and showing them for their in their theaters and they had to pay no royalties and there was nobody to answer to because there was no copyright. That's why every DVD collection of horror films that you see will always contain Night of the Living Dead because it, it's a freebie. It's <laughs> They don't have to pay anybody to put it in their collection. It's just public domain. This was a heavy blow for the two filmmakers. Yes, they lost out on pff, 
a ton of money because he had created a genre. But what they didn't realize at the time was, yes, they didn't get any money for this, but the fact that nobody had to pay for distribution of this movie made this movie go worldwide. People, people in Japan were watching Night of the Living Dead. People, these two filmmakers became instant household names because of the greed of <laughs> the populace of people. This film was shown everywhere. From Pennsylvania to California, these two filmmakers became legend. Now, kind of legend for making a stupid mistake, maybe, maybe not. These two filmmakers had created a genre of mindless flesh-eating zombies. There's no more uh, kings or armies or that kind of stuff. It was straight forth gore, mind-eating, blood-drinking zombies. And the world knew about it. So they were famous worldwide, but had no money to back it up. Fortunately, fame breeds money. And later on, the two were able to continue making their movies. After this, the two filmmakers went their separate ways. Now. Contrary to popular belief, the two filmmakers didn't hate each other. They, did, however, had no intention ever plans of ever working together again. This was bad for them and it was a dark time for them, yet In the Dark Time created some amazing things. Now, the zombie camps were divided into two, John, George Romero and John Russo. John Russo hooked up with a uh, screenplay writer and filmmaker named Dan O'Bannon, who we may know the name, recognize the name, was one of the screenplay writers who penned the script, Alien. George Romero hooked up with Tom Savini, a mastermind of special horror effects, who wasn't able to help them out on the original Night of the Living Dead because he listed into the army at the time and his skills were needed elsewhere, making uh, medical films for uh, army training. So he got to work with uh, Tom Savini again, who would be creating zombies for him for the next decades to come. In 1978, 10 years later, George Romero finally was able to make his vision of zombies, Dawn of the Dead. It came really apparent to people right away. George Romero had grand visions for his zombie movies. He wanted prison camps and, and big army trucks and militaries and flying vehicles. He had a huge, broad vision of the apocalypse that was to be created from Night of the Living Dead. People were going to recognize it as a sequel of Night of the Living Dead, but he wanted to make it completely different, so he shot it in color and made it an epic length uh, movie. The final script for Dawn of the Dead was 253 pages, which is huge. In movie making terms, you got to consider about a minute a page is the uh, rule of thumb. Well, this isn't actually true because in this example, the film became the first cut for a Cannes Film Festival was 139 minutes. That's a long zombie movie. Across the seas in Italy, the zombie film was taking off. The whole zombie genre. Great filmmakers like Dario Gente loved, loved the zombie film. And they, he adapted a distribution of Dawn of the Dead and we scored it with a band called Goblin. Guys, rock. Google them. You gotta find the Goblin soundtracks. Awesome. And gave Dawn of the Dead a soundtrack by the band Goblin. And uh, also helped with Dario and Gente. And they released it in Italy as Zombie. So, when it came time to recut the Dawn of the Dead for American Cut, he used a, the Goblin score with Dario and Gente. And um, it almost came classy in a way. There's a certain kind of class behind Dawn of the Dead that revigorated the interest of zombie movies to the mainstream. Because at this time, because there was no copyright on Night of the Living Dead, every filmmaker in the world was making zombie movies. Making, and it was just hordes and hordes of terrible, terrible films.